Hello, dear sewistas. Today I will show you how to jazz up a simple round neckline with a pretty button placket. The special thing about this button placket is that it is sewn very tidily on the inside and you can even work it into an already completed shirt at a later time. I will now take my half finished shirt. The neckline here has already been sewn, just the sleeves and the side seams are missing now. On top of this, we need two rectangular fabric pieces, one for the right and one for the left part of the placket. These can be cut from jersey, like I have done here, and reinforced with an iron-on interfacing. But you can just as easily cut them from a woven cotton fabric. Click the link below for my website Patty Do, in which you will find the corresponding pattern and size specification for the placket pieces. Beyond this, we need two to three buttons. You can make it really easy for yourself here and simply use jersey button snaps as well as a protractor, fabric chalk, and this particularly useful double-sided tape. We will begin now and draw a couple of guiding lines on the neckline of the front piece of our shirt, whereby the wrong fabric side lies on top. To begin with, we draw a vertical line just below the neckline. To do so, you can either measure out the center of the neckline or you orientate yourself through this notch here. Make sure that the line runs exactly vertical and straight and is not crooked. Now draw two more lines on the right and left respectively with a distance of five millimeters or a quarter of an inch to the first line. The distance between these two outer lines now measures a centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Next, we will mark the end of our button placket, which will be 12 centimeters or four and three quarter inches long in total. I will now measure this distance from the top edge here. Following this, we prepare the two pieces for our button placket. These will initially be ironed down the middle and then the edges will also be ironed over by one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Now, we take one strip, fold this ironed edge over, and sew this little part up here with a seam allowance of one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. To do so, I will use a stitch length of 2.5. This is what this short little seam looks like now. And then we repeat this step back to front on the other placket strip. On the prepared strips, we can now diagonally cut off the seam allowance at the front here and turn the strips right side out. After having prepared the strips for a button placket like this, we can now sew them onto the shirt. To do so, I now position the first strip like this so that the previously sewn seam, this edge here, meets up with the upper edge of the neckline. And this open side I here lay against the drawn on line. Now we sew the first placket strip on with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm beginning exactly up here at this point and sew up to the lower placket edge that we drew on before. Furthermore, I have placed a pin for myself here. I will use a stitch length of 2.5. To 
could make it easier for yourself, you could also draw in the seam line on the placket piece with a pencil. And this is what our completely sewn on first placket strip looks like now. Make sure that you seal the end of the seam down here with two stitches forwards and backwards. And now we follow with the second placket piece. This one we will lay with this fabric edge onto the right outside line. With a soft pencil, I have now drawn in a seam line for myself here, with a distance of 1 cm or 3 8 of an inch to this edge. Now, it is very important that this drawn in seam line runs exactly 3 cm or 1 and 1 quarter of an inch parallel to the first seam here. So, I position the placket accordingly and secure it with a few pins. Alternatively, you can also secure it with some double-sided sewing tape. If you are using double-sided tape to secure the placket, then make sure that you are only placing it within the seam allowance, in this one centimeter or three-eighths of an inch here. To mark the end of the placket piece, I place another pin here, and now I sew this seam exactly the way I did on the first placket piece. Both button placket strips have now been sewn on the left side. And before we continue, we are just going to have a look at the right side to make sure that both seams run parallel at a distance of three centimeters or one and one quarter inches, and that both are nicely sealed at the end and also end at the same height. Once we check this, we can now cut into the front piece of our shirt between these two seams. We will cut precisely down the middle here until 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch before the two seams end. Then we continue doing so diagonally on each side and then cut until 2 millimeters or 1 8 of an inch from the seam ends. While doing so, make sure you don't also cut the two placket pieces on the back side here. Now, we can fold the placket pieces outwards and sew them on. In doing so, we begin with the right side, with the so-called underlap, which will later be covered up by the so-called overlap, which is the other placket piece. Before we fold over the placket piece here, we can cut off a little of the seam allowance diagonally here, so this bit here doesn't end up too thick. Then we can secure the placket's edge with a few pins and sew it on with an edge stitch. In doing so, we start off at this underlying seam end.
So, this is what the completed underlap looks like now, and we will now proceed in the same fashion with the overlap. So, with the second placket piece, we cut the seam allowance up here, then fold the placket outwards and secure it with an edge stitch. Here too, I begin at exactly the point where the underlying seam ends. Both placket pieces are now sewn on. Next, we can sew the end of the placket. To do so, we lay the overlap over the underlap so that these two edges line up here, and so that also the upper ends here are lying at the same height. If you want, you can place a few pins. Now you can fold the front piece upwards here and pull it out through this little opening at the placket ends, along with this little triangle. And now everything is nicely aligned. These three pieces, so the two placket pieces and this little triangle, will now be sewn together here with a short seam. In doing so, make sure that the placket ends are nice and straight. Furthermore, you should not sew too much because then you will end up with these little wrinkles at the placket's end. But also, don't make your seam too short because otherwise you will be left with little holes here. So this seam requires a little bit of finesse. The finished placket ends look like this now. On top of this, we can next edge stitch the edge of the overlap and sew a decorative cross in this lower area, which simultaneously prevents the ends from tearing here. To do so, I will make a little mark with a distance of two centimeters or three quarters of an inch from the placket's end. As the first step, I stitch the edge of the overlap whereby the underlap is folded aside. As the second step, I lay the overlap exactly on top of the underlap and turn my piece around and now sew the little cross.
This is what the completed placket looks like now. If you want, you can shorten and tidy the ends on the inside. Last but not least, you can now sew on the buttons, or you can use jersey snap buttons like I will do, which are secured with some pliers. But before we do this, I am going to mark the positions of my buttons. First of all, I mark the place of the topmost button, which for me will be 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch from the upper edge. Accordingly, I will make a little dot here at the center. Then I mark the position for the last snap, which will also be 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch away from this other seam here. Finally, I place the middle button by measuring the distance between these two, and here too, make a little mark. With these markings, I can now attach jersey snaps with a pair of pliers, whereby these parts will be attached to the overlap and their counterparts are attached to the underlap. The position of the counterparts on the underlap, I can only work out through laying the overlap exactly along this edge and pressing down a little, which leaves me with indents of the buttons, and I can use these to figure out the right position for the other button half. and our button placket is done. Of course, you can experiment with the length and width of the placket and use it to decorate other shirts, for example, also ones for women or children. More sewing tutorials and fantastic patterns with step-by-step -step video instructions can be found at Patty Do. I hope you have fun sewing this project and until next time, bye.